Welcome back to Japan Soul Traveler. I hope you are fine and I hope uh, you had an amazing summer and today I want to try something different and suggest you some um, readings for the upcoming um, fall season and I Today I want to talk to you about some very nice literature books, some, some novels, some short stories, some, something like that. Well, maybe in the future I will show you some more uh, uh, non-fiction books or uh, some more uh, specific books about Japan, religions, anthropology and so on. So, let's get started. When you think ab about uh, Japanese literature, there may be very different things that pops into your mind, such for example, uh, I don't know, uh, Yukio Mishima or Natsume Soroseki or uh, uh, maybe Banana Yoshimoto or um, yes, lots and lots of different authors and I have read lots of them, but today I want to suggest some of the books that I think maybe uh, describe best what Japanese literature is um, of course, I'm not uh, um, how to say uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, it's just some, some suggestion based on my tastes and my emotions. So uh, these are, um, I think, um, yes, there are fi five five books that for me were um, an amazing discovery and uh, and in a way brought me closer to Japanese culture. So uh, we can begin with this one. This one is probably one of the most uh, renowned and read book um, uh, in Japanese literature and this is the Genji Monogatari. This, has, uh, this is actually the first volume, there is another one which is the same, um, more, or like, more or less. And um, of course for Japanese people this is much like I don't know, Dante for Italians uh, and uh, I think Tolkien for uh, English speaking people. So in a way it's a, a must read and when you stumble upon such a huge must read you really are scared because <laughs> you think, well, it's it was written, uh, I don't know, it's, it was written in the 11th century, how can it possibly be something that I feel um, comfortable with? And, Yes, there are indeed some aspects that are a little more complex to uh, get in touch with, but nonetheless, I think this is a very uh, this was a very good surprise for me because I didn't expect such a nice and pleasant reading, and I didn't expect to find such a passion and such a, um, and such emotions there because again, being written in the 11th century, you don't expect people to write or even feel like. Uh, this book will uh, will show you. So uh, maybe you know the story. It's about uh, it's a, a kind of a biography of a of a prince, uh, the heir to the Japanese imperial throne, and it's a very um, it it is dot with a lot of uh, love stories and with a multitude of character, which sometimes in fact is difficult to keep track of, but. I will definitely suggest you give it a try, at least the first volume. It's a, it's a, yes, it can be a quest, but <laughs> it might be worth. The second one, uh, I do not have actually here the Italian or the English version because I lend them, and so I have to show you the, the Japanese one. Uh, this is uh, Natsume Soseki Kokoro. This is uh, probably one of the most important books in Japanese literature all around and uh, it is considered like the example of the Meiji literature and uh, not only literature but uh, feelings and uh, sensitivity and in a way it's a very detailed picture of the huge enormous transformation that uh, the country went through in that times. It's a tragic story, of course it is, otherwise we wouldn't be happy, would we? So it's a... I, I give it a try in Japanese too because, uh, again, I want to... Uh, I want to suffer in life, so if you see it's a underlined version, but it's a kind of a 
of a, it's the story of a man and a friend that for some reason uh, doesn't end up very well and um, maybe some of you already know the end I do not want to spoil it if someone in case uh, wants to read it and it's a mixture of private and intimate feelings with the political problems and the political changes that occurred in that time. So shifting from the very old literature to the quite old literature, I will not propose you three more modern uh, writings and in a way much easier books to read. Um, the first one, which was for me Wow, uh, how to say, a discovery is this. I don't think you can properly read it, it's uh, Natsuo Kirino, this is the Italian version, it's uh, a very strange translation because it's uh, translated at the Quattro Casalinghe di Tokyo, but the original title is out, so I think, again, you may know it under that name. Natsuo Kirino is... Um, thriller writer. She writes uh, murders and violent sex and investigations and for me was uh, love at first sight, uh, first reading of course. This was the first read from her. Uh, it's unexpected. Uh, it's about four women, very different women one from the other, that in a way uh, stumble upon some very tragic event and they have to face the consequence of that. They stumble upon a murder and in a way the whole story revolves around this murder and how they handle it. So again it seems uh, very easy but the writings and uh, the cruelty and blood that you will find there I think it would surprise you first because you don't expect that from a female writer often and it's something that is very well written and deeply, deeply described. And the second thing is because probably you don't expect to uh, enjoy that much such a story and uh, it's very dark. That's what can you know, explore the very black souls of the human being in a way, so thumbs up for this, really loved it. Then the fourth book, and we are almost done, <laughs> it's um, a quite new one, I guess this is from the last year, 2016, 2017, I don't actually remember very well, uh, I will write everything properly in the description, and it's this. Again, I'm sorry if I show you the Italian version, I do not have the other version of the books. Uh, the author is Aki Shimazaki. I think she wrote this quite big book in... Uh, not in Japanese, maybe French, I don't remember, but I will, again, be more accurate in the description. And the Italian, the Italian um, edition is a, a collection of all the four... The one, two, three, four, five, all the five uh, shorter novels that um, form the story. And this is a family story where uh, the first uh, female protagonist, uh, the, the main character, uh, begins to um, better understand the complex relationship within her own family, uh, her mother and her grandmother, and how it all get complicated by the war, the second war, world war, and how it all get tangled and all the story is a very deep immersion in a different time because it's mainly, it mainly takes place during the war. If I am correct, in uh, um, Hiroshima, I think. And it's a very delicate story, it's a very sad story, again, of course, otherwise it wouldn't be Japanese literature. Um, but it's a... In the end it's a love story and it's a story of a whole family that has to pick up the pieces after the world destroyed everything. And finally, I couldn't let him out the list. Yes. This is Murakami Haruki, of course. This 
book is translated in Italian as La fine del mondo, il paese delle meraviglie. But I think the original title, uh, in English at least, was uh, Hard Boiled Wonderland. Yes, Hard Boiled Wonderland. While in Japanese is Sekai no Wari to Hado Boiled Wonderland. The end of the world and uh, Hard Boiled Wonderland. How to describe Murakami? I, I, I can't. It's absolutely um, out of any uh, possible description. It's outside any possible category. Uh, I, I loved Norwegian Wood, for example, which was indeed a love story and a very deep and touching and romantic one. But uh, other than that, all these books are a mixture of dreams, uh, nonsense, um, other world, spiritual influences and uh, people trying to strive against these uh, strange happenings and events. And this is not exception. This is probably my favorite book uh, of Murakami. Uh, even more perhaps than uh, 1Q84, perhaps, even if I loved it. But in a way uh, I love this one because I understood it fully and I could find the beginning and the end, which is a very sad end in my opinion. But however, it was a, it was a world in which I can dive and in which I can finally, in a way, understand what was going on there. Uh, Murakami tends sometimes to leave the, the reader with the what the f is going on here? What is this? What's, what's this character? What's he doing here? Why he then disappears? So, um, and I think it's amazing and uh, I love Murakami writings because they don't explain everything and they leave you with this enormous question mark floating there. But sometimes it is very nice to see, oh, I get it. And this, I get it. This, I loved it. And this, I would read twice, three times, it doesn't matter, because I really, really enjoyed it. So this was my first list of the first five books I could think about when uh, I thought, well, let's see uh, what books really, uh, really uh, struck me. I hope I will have the chance to show you some more books and maybe some more non-fiction books and maybe some more art books because it's, uh, well, I have uh, an enormous amount of them and I hope you can enjoy them. So thanks for watching and talk to you soon. Bye.